Hey there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Simon, welcome to Season 3 of Teen Titans. I realise it's been a little bit of a break between Season 2 and Season 3, but in the meantime I've just been catching up on some other shows. I have been working quite a lot through the week, so my recording time is reduced, but I am still very much intent on carrying on with Teen Titans into Season 3. Um, season 2 was very good. I enjoyed the um, addition of Terra as a, not quite a villain, but she wasn't quite an ally. She was kind of like this morally grey character, um, kind of being constantly pulled from one side to the next. You know, one minute she's friends, then she's an enemy, then we're not quite sure which way she's going to go, and then she eventually does turn on Slade um, and ends up, I mean... Unfortunately, stuck in stone herself, but she did appear to get rid of the problem that is Slade Wilson. Um, Deathstroke, to those of us who are more uh, familiar with the actual character. Um, and so season three leaves us with new possibilities. I don't quite know where this is going to go. I know that each season, they say, focuses on a specific character. Um, obviously, season one was very much focused on Robin. Um, season two... I, I think you could certainly say it was a fo focused on terror, but from a Teen Titans point of view, um, I think it, it focused quite a bit on Beast Boy. It focused, um, you know, uh, again, it's one of those where each character kind of got their own individual episodes and their own time to shine. There was no, I, I guess there was no real uh, standout arc for, for any individual other than Terra herself, um, you know, whereas in season one we had that uh, recurring arc with Robin and Slade. Um, so I expect season three to be very similar, where, you know, we have another character who has an underlying story arc. Um, there's going to be a few throwaway filler episodes. Um, hopefully nothing like the bizarre and utterly horrendous episode with that alternate universe Robin fan. Um can't even, I don't even want to remember his name anymore. Um, I don't think I bothered writing it down. No, I didn't. Thank God for that, because I don't want to be reminded of that anymore. But um, yes, we're going to jump into Season 3. Now, before we do, I want to say a big thank you to my Patreon super supporters. Brendan Wells, Brian, Frank Tremel, Karen Abel, Erin and Steelpelt, Ernesto Sanchez Jr., Chelsea Keel, um... Nightwing 0102, Michael Y, Mr. Greg 89, Nick Walters, Nightwolf 37, and Ollie Brown. So, without further ado, let's jump in and let's see what happens. Oh. The Hive Group. I could use a hand here. How about a foot? Yeah. Yep. No, um, actual. Costume changes for this season. Uh. Oh, they have a new leader. Who is it? <laughs> oh no. I suppose he is vulnerable to magnets. <laughs> He's just taking the magnet with him. We'll see them again. Sooner than they think. Clever. I'm glad the intro is the same. Do I hear an undercover assignment coming on? Lucky for you guys, I happen to be a master of disguise. Except for the fact that you're always green. Kind of a giveaway in an animal. Mongoose is gonna blend right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Beast Boy. I was thinking of someone with a slightly better disguise. Not nearly as charming, but he can bench press a box. He looks exactly the same. Oh. It still has a few bugs to work out. Oh. Oh. He's. He's all oh, flesh and blood. Oh. You look unplugged. <laughs> nice work. If I didn't know better, I'd think you were just normal. Oh, hey, <clears throat> Star. 
I didn't. How long have you been standing there? Is this going to be a cyborg season? High school. Just checking out the old unimproved me. I think he's going to combat a lot. Yeah. The combat, he's going to have to combat his feelings on his human side. The original version. <laughs> so can anyone just walk into this place? Yeah, you blend, all right. Ah, sloppy Joes, just like the mad scientist who created me used to make. So yeah, anyone apparently can just walk in as long as you are convincing enough to be a villain. Was that Batman? I look at Batman's outfit. Not a good way to start your uh, career as a villain. Even an undercover one. Uh oh. Oh, he's using the holographic generator. Huh. That's the guy who I thought was Batman. He has got a very Batman like suit. Hey, Rocco, had enough? <laughs> Quit fooling around. Headmaster is watching. Ooh, who's the headmaster? I don't know, but he's a very, very pointy chin. He's going to save all of them. He's going to become the new favourite, isn't he? Nice. The irony that he saved them. Oh no. Oh no, I've heard I've heard of him before. Like Sebastian Blood. Had a few close calls though. What have you learned? They're working on some kind of class project. Sounds heavy, but no details You're in a very echoey corridor where anyone could run into you. Why not go to a private room? Yep. I think this is just them playing bully. Don't bother trying to run. Huh? Oh no, is she gonna fall for him? Who are you? <laughs> They've done something to the food. Uh oh, it's a bomb! Did you just call them slut faces? In a show where you don't swear, you don't do any innuendo, he called them slut faces? No, that's why any good doomsday threat needs. <laughs> what? Trying to make him more realistic. What is the point of him? He can't fight. Why is he there? Do you copy? Cyborg, come in. Whoa. <clears throat> I just found the class project. Uh oh. Building something called an ion amplifier. Oh no. He knows. Well, this is a surprise, Mr. Stone. Or should I say Cyborg. cyborg. Yep. Oh no. My hand. It's an illusion. It's a good crux. It's a good crux to No. Then I think it's time for the other students to see our little class project. I'd introduce you to my students, but I'm fairly certain you've already met. Oh no. He's really just gonna turn on his whole team? Ooh.
Come on, Gears Mode, I'm sure that's happened before. He's not taking it easy. Oh god. Ah, I really hate Gizmo. He's so annoying. Oh! Robot Cyborg! We're smarter than this! I like the symbology of this. Booyah! <laughs> Just booyah after booyah. Oh! Oh, he broke his hologrammatic projector. I had a feeling you'd say that. This will yeah. your power. How much is he under the influence of Brother Blood is my question. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was a ruse. It was too easy. And he's got his weapon now. Now get out of there. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cool ability. Because half my brain is electronic. He may have been mm. able to fool the man, but he couldn't fool the machine. Which means next time we face him, we have our own secret weapon. I wouldn't say so much secret, but, you know. Because of this. And when I was at the hive, for a while, mm. I actually felt normal. I get a feeling we're going to explore this more in this season. To me, you are normal. The human side. the titans that means you have to be initiated oh, oh no at least he doesn't have to eat a unicycle okay so i do think i remember someone saying that this season was going to focus more heavily on cyborg which makes sense um if they are going down the route of him exploring his more human side and, and the regrets of whatever accident it was that caused him to become cyborg um I did feel like, I mean, to be honest, they, they were getting me at one point, because at first I was wholly convinced that it was a ruse, and that Cyborg wasn't actually with Hive. Um, because it felt too sudden, it felt like he didn't even question it. But then, you know, when I realised that, oh, maybe it's the brainwashing thing, you know, part of me was like, mm, maybe this is where they're going to go with it. You know, have a another member of the Titans fall under the command of the leader of Hive, which is now Brother Blood, who um, I've seen in Arrow as Sebastian Blood. Um, very similar kind of like member of a cult. Um, but he was more of a more of a normal everyday human guy than, you know, a headmaster of, you know, a school of villainy. Um, and again, another, another um, big name voice actor. Um, I'm trying to remember his name i think it's john dimaggio that was it john dimaggio who voices bender in futurama marcus and gears of war um he's done a lot of stuff he's another big time voice actor um you know and, and it's really impressive how this show you know which released back in i mean this season it says 2004 um you know was able to to really commandeer some really good voice actors um but you know again this this episode i think is setting up the theme of the season you know maybe we're gonna see brother blood again down the line and they're gonna continue to tinker and toy with cyborg's feelings and his desire to you know be normal you know and i use that in quotation marks normal um and just to be human again which I think could be a, a really good crux for the season. Because, you know, we don't know what caused him to become Cyborg. We've never really focused on... Um, I mean, we focused on his fear of becoming all robot in that episode. I think it was in season one when um, 
you know, he ended up going missing, his battery run out, and, you know, that robot was going to fix him by, you know, making him completely robot. Um, but we've never explored the side of his humanity where he wants to be more human. Um, so I think that's a very interesting little story to follow for this season. Um, but yeah, it seems to be business as usual. Doesn't seem to be any major differences in animation, in, you know, the cosmetic side of it. The costumes all seem to be exactly the same. The intro is still the same, which is something I always appreciate. Um, so yeah, it's just a new story, a new season, some new characters, and, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. So, uh, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you for the next one.